when we are called to do an experiment, sometimes it's a very short lead time. We get a 12 hour call and uh, we're, we're in. My advisor and I, we have to work together. He's talking to the astronauts, I'm talking to the cadre. And so it's really difficult to take it all in. Very nice, very good. Try not to break them up, but that's a very good disturbance. And now back and forth the opposite direction. What's funny is I forget who I'm talking to sometimes. I'll have conversations where it's like, oh yeah, you know, we had an experiment yesterday. It was on the space station. We were talking to the astronaut, Doug, and it's so casual. <laughs> and it's like, most people are like, what do you do? Throughout this season of NASA Explorers, you've seen what it takes to send science to space through the eyes of one team of researchers. But they aren't the only ones. For two decades, the International Space Station has hosted science from thousands of researchers across the globe. The importance of the ISS to the research community is huge. From the very basic phenomenon of taking gravity out of the equation is that the ISS is really the only platform we have right now. It gives you access, long-term access, to a microgravity environment. You can do the experiments you know, on Earth, but those are almost a precursor to, okay, now let's remove gravity and see what happens. Does it change? If you're like me, you're a scientist who's trying to you know, unravel the mysteries of science and someone shows you a shiny new tool, which is microgravity, which can, uh, you know, make science different. And different is what we constantly shoot for. And different can take time. Before new scientific discoveries could be made, we had to transform an orbital outpost into an orbiting laboratory. In the early days, it was so focused on building constructing station and making things safe. And then we started stepping up the number of hours a week that we can use crew time for experiments and research. That was a very exciting time. The space station would have more capabilities for science. They would have more equipment up there. They would have, you know, freezers, uh, glove boxes, microscopes, etc. Things that we could use to extend the scope of our science. Space Station became a laboratory. It lent itself very well to this concept of flying experiment. You get the results back, just like you would be in your own laboratory at home. You get more questions as well as answers. And during that time, a lot was learned. A lot of surprising things were learned. And with that knowledge now, we're developing experiments that are much more advanced in terms of their engineering application. It's been an extraordinary journey to watch over the past 20 odd years how this has all kind of come together and become, I wouldn't say routine, but accessible. And that's a really powerful thing. The same thing that gives us new insights also creates unique challenges. Microgravity changes the way everything works, including science. Working in space, as you can imagine, has a lot of challenges. Everything has to be compact. If you're gonna send something into space, it has to be small. And like, how can you fit like an entire lab bench worth of science into something, you know, your size or your hand? And yet, we still get great information. We still, you know, are discovering things, you know, all the time. And I think it's incredible. You know, up till the NASA twin study, I was an Earth investigator. The biggest adaptation that I had to make was, well, on Earth, there's an ample supply of all the tissue that you need, whether you need blood or you need urine. So we had to work together and figure out a plan on how to use one vial of blood instead of 10 vials of blood. The stress of these precious, precious, this is the most precious samples I've ever worked with, was kind of novel. There were um, different um, students that all got together to create this project. Uh, it was really stressing on every review, because of course you're like, they're gonna say everything is wrong and they're gonna blame it on me or whatever. We knew that it would be difficult, but everybody that jumped into the project um, pulled through. And at the end, we achieved a successful mission. So I think that's awesome. What we've learned from more than 3000 space station experiments is helping us back here on Earth and on our quest farther into space, to the moon and Mars. 
These experiments are aiding drug development to fight diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. We've learned about combating bone and muscle loss, which could assist people suffering from osteoporosis. We've tested how to grow plants in microgravity, a critical component for feeding future space explorers. None of this would have been possible without the astronauts, the humans living and working aboard the International Space Station. Having the astronauts there to help us was a critical part of being able to do more complicated science, to get higher science yield out of the science that you were doing. They were incredible as people who were there to troubleshoot your experiment should you need anything. You can never replace a set of human hands. I don't care if it's on station, on the moon, on Mars. There's just something that people can adaptively do that you'll never get a machine to do. You can collect a lot of data with robotic sensors, but there is still a very big role for humans to play in being able to make on-the-fly decisions. Yeah, that has a little bit of a bubble on the end. Do you want me to force that out? If it's possible, if you think you can do it with the tip, yeah, we would appreciate that. At this point forward, this is our, our DNA to sequence, so the most we can retain, the better. It was rewarding to be able to put my hands on and know that we're doing productive work. Sometimes we get thrown a curveball and something goes wrong. Station Huntsville on two for TJ and ABRS. So now they go, all right, we gotta get you to go into the guts of this thing Go find these two wires. Have you ever seen those scary movies where the bomb diffuser says, whatever you do, don't cut the red wire? That's kind of what it feels like. You've got 